Hey there, in this video we are talking about binary search, and there's a great example of this in section 8.2 in the Gattis C++ textbook. Boy, binary search, possibly the single most important algorithm in all of computer science, so I'm really glad we get to talk about this here today. Binary search, what is that? So binary search is another search algorithm. In the prior video, we were looking at linear search. So this is our second searching option here. And the first thing to realize is that uh, binary search is a search algorithm that only works on sorted arrays. For this to work, you've got to have your list, your array, organized in a particular fashion, namely sorted from smallest to largest. Or you could just reverse it. You could have it from largest to smallest, but one way or the other, it's got to be sorted in order like that. Now, before I go on, let me just think about that for a little bit, right? People have been organizing sorted lists of things for a very long time. We have tablets from ancient Babylon, actually, of things being sorted in a list to make it easy for people to find what they're hunting for. You can think about an old school phone book or a dictionary or, you know, even just page numbers work like this, right? The numbers in a book are on the pages are in increasing order to make it easy to find the page that you're looking for. So maybe you haven't thought about the details about exactly how that assists you or what the thought process is to use them, but basically binary search, we get to dig into the details of exactly why that's useful, okay? So gotta have your array sorted, first of all. That is not the case for linear search, but for binary search, you do have to have your data organized in this particular way. Okay, so having said that, Here's the main idea from binary search. Let's say I have an array of four things. And normally we're thinking about more than that, but let's say four things. If it's sorted like this, you'll find it's very easy to kind of cut it in half and decide the thing that I'm looking for, is it in the first half or is it in the second half? That'll be very easy. Let, just for argument's sake, let's say that what I'm looking for is in the first half of the array. Well, I'm never gonna have to look at these again, okay? So having determined that, we'll do it again. We'll cut this in half, right? And we'll decide what I'm looking for. Is it in the first half or the second half? Again, just for argument's sake, let's say it's in the first half, which seems like it's a good idea at this point. Anyway, that's gotta be it, right? If the thing that I'm looking for is in the array at all, that's it. I only actually had to make two decisions to get to this point. So for a four element array, I'm never actually gonna have to look at or compare more than two things to find the location where it is. Right? Compare that to linear search, where the plan was look at every single thing one after the other. Particularly if it's the last thing, or if what I'm searching for isn't there, you are going to have to look at all four things. But with binary search, you cut it in half, and you cut it in half, and that's it. And for this example, I never have to do that more than twice. Okay, so let's think about how, how does that, how do you decide, right, whether what you're looking for is in the first half or the second half of a particular slice? So that's what this second bullet point here is. So the very first thing you do is you go take something in the middle, right? In, as, whereas linear search starts at the beginning, binary search, the very first thing you look at is one of the things in the middle, right? Go find something in the middle. Compare what I'm searching for to that. If what I'm searching for is less than that thing in the middle, you have to be in the front half. But if what I'm searching for is greater than that middle value, then it has to be the back half. And basically that's the decision. So look at the thing in the middle and that'll tell you whether what you want is before it or after it because the whole thing's sorted, right? And then having done that, you repeat that on this part, find something in the middle, compare it, that'll tell you whether what I have is less than or greater than the thing in the middle of this slice, right? And you just keep doing that and you split it in half and split it in half and split it in half until you're just down to one thing. So here's the pseudocode to the binary search algorithm, right? So what you're going to need here is you're going to need two variables that basically document where the start and the end of the current slice that you're looking are. These are called first and last in this code. So to begin with, first is set to zero. Obviously, that's the beginning of the array. And last is set to the last subscript of the array, which, of course, will be size minus one, or in this example, it will be three. So you have a while loop here, and what's going to happen is as the loop goes on, these two markers are going to get closer and closer together. So you're going to slice it, throw part away, and the markers will get closer, right? At some point, what you'll see is that they actually switch position, right? Clearly, first is starting off less than last, but they'll get closer and closer. They'll actually switch position, 
and that'll be how you know that you're done and you've narrowed it down to really just one slot. So on each iteration, right, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick something in the middle, have a, mid have a variable called middle and set it to the average of the first and the last markers, right? Set that to halfway between first and last. So that's basically just an average job. In this case, if first is zero and last is three, what's the average of zero and three? Well, zero and three add up to three, divide by two, you get one. Remember in integer math on a computer, it's always truncated, so you just throw away whatever the remainder is. It would be this, here's index one right here. So, I mean, maybe that's the thing that you're actually hunting for. So first of all, you would do an equality job. If the value of this array bracket middle is equal to what I'm looking for, you have found what you're looking for. And you're gonna jump out of the function and you're gonna return this index. It's the exact same reporting mechanism as linear search. You report the index where you found it. Now, if that doesn't happen, it probably won't, right? Now you're gonna do a less than comparison. If what I'm looking for is less than this value, then you know that what you're looking for has to be in the first half of the array. How do you mark that? Well, keep the first index the same, but take the last index and put it over here, right? Mark this as now the last position that you need to worry about. So, so overwrite last and now mark this as the thing you need to worry about. If that's not the case, then what you're looking for has to be in the back half of the array. And so you'll keep the last marker the same, but you'll set the first marker to over here, right? And then on the next iteration, you only need to search from here's the first to here's the last thing that I'm thinking about right now. Basically, that's it. Um, so that's the having job, right? Take this, figure out which half it's in, right? Now here's my first, here's my last. Figure out what half it is in, it's in here, right? So once first and last become the same thing, that's how the, you know the loop has to stop, right? And that explains the condition in that while loop. So once again, if what you're finding, if what you're looking for is anywhere in the array, you're gonna narrow it down very rapidly and you're gonna return from that equality test that's inside the loop, you're gonna return the index where you found it. But again, if what you're looking for isn't anywhere in there, you're gonna still determine that pretty quickly, fall out of the loop and return negative one to indicate that that is missing from your array. Hopefully that makes sense. Here is the C++ translation of that, right? The function's called binary search. Again, it returns an integer, which is gonna be the index where you found it, or negative one if it's not there. Takes the exact same three parameters that we set up in the linear search last time, an array, the size of the array, and the value they're hunting for. So set first is zero, set last to, seven, to size minus one to begin with, that's the last legitimate subscript. Keep going as long as first is less than or equal to last, the way this is set up, right? Every step through, find the thing in the middle. Average the indices of the beginning and the ending, is what you see there. Once you have that middle, check whether that's what you want. If not, you're gonna figure out whether it's less than or greater than and update either the first index or the last index to mark the places where you need to search from then on. And that's how that works, okay? Hopefully that's good. So once again, right, we're gonna do this with every single algorithm that we look at in chapter eight. To prove that we understand it, we're gonna take that code that I've shrunk a little bit and we're gonna hand trace an example to see exactly what the action is and confirm that it's giving the right answer. So let's do the exact same thing we did with linear search. I'm gonna take that exact same array, right? It contains two, three, five, 11, 17, 23, 29. Now remember, for binary search, it must be sorted. So fortunately, that array is sorted from smallest number to largest number. So this actually will work with this. The size is seven, so you'd pass that in. And just like last time, we're gonna be searching for the value of 17. Remember last time that took like five steps, I think, for us to find it with linear search. So every single local variable I'm gonna keep track of in my table, right? There's the middle variable for the index of the thing in the middle. There's the first and the last index for where we're currently starting and stopping the search. And we're gonna track that on every single iteration of the loop. So here's my table. I'm keeping count of the number of steps and marking what's in the middle, what's in the first, what's in the last variables. So as you get into this function, I'm gonna call like this line 49, I'm gonna call this step zero. You haven't gotten into the loop yet, but you have made the variable first and set it to zero. And you've made last and you've set it to Maybe you can say what that's gonna be. Clearly gonna be six, right? 
Okay, so step zero, middle doesn't even exist yet. The middle variable isn't even declared until you get into the loop. So I'm just putting a dash for middle because it doesn't exist in memory yet. But first is zero and last is six. Okay, line 51. Is first less than or equal to last? Yes. So we're clearly going into the body of the loop. Set middle to the middle index to the average of first and last. What's the average of first and last? Clearly three, right? So in step one that we just entered, the middle index is going to be three, and now we're going to make this decision here. Array index three, right? Array index three, zero, one, two, three, that's the 11, right? Is 11 equal to our search value of 17? Well, that's false. So we're not going to do line 55. We're going to come down to line 56 and say, is array index 3, remember the 11, is 11 greater than the value we're searching for? Is 11 greater than 17? We'll know. So we're going to come down to the else here on line 59, right? And we're saying what we're looking for is in the back half of the array. So keep the last index the same, but update first to be over here, right? One more than the middle over here. So last is kept at six, but first becomes middle plus one, which is four. Okay, so from now on, we're only going to be hunting in indexes four through six. Now that happens to be, right, the 1723, 29. That's what we'll be hunting from now on. All right, next iteration. So you go back to line 51. Is first less than or equal to last? Yes. Four is less than or equal to six. So we'll go through the body again. Set middle to the average of those two indices. What's the average of four and six? Well, clearly it's five. So in step two here, the second iteration, the middle index is five. Line 54. So array index five, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Now that's the 23, right? It's actually 23. Is 23 equal to the search value of 17? Well, that's false. So we're gonna go down to line 56. Is array bracket five, is 23 greater than our search value of 17? Well, yeah, that's actually true. So that sends us to line 57, right? So we're hunting somewhere between four and six. We're gonna keep that four the same, but since we know that we need to be in the front half of this particular slice, we update last to be lower, specifically middle minus one, so that'll be four, okay? And you go back, line 51, is first less than or equal to last? Well, yeah, they're actually equal, right? Four is equal to four. So we're gonna go into it again. We're gonna set middle to the average of those two things. Now the average of four and four is four, of course. So here in step three, middle is four, you land, you notice that first and last have become the same thing. So there's only one location where what we're searching for could possibly reside. That's in index four. And you land on line 54 is array index four. Now that's 17, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. That's the 17. Is 17 equal to the 17 that we're searching for? Of course that is true. And therefore you jump out of this function and you return. Hopefully you know what we're, number we're returning the four, right? Just like we did last time. I mean, that's what happened ultimately at the end of the linear search when we did this exact same example. Of course, the 17 is actually sitting in the array in location four. So you do get the right answer. But notice that this took fewer steps, right? Last time it actually took us five iterations of the linear search. This only took, th took us three, right? Just three steps. And for this particular array, an array of this size, you would never need any more steps than that, no matter what the situation is. If what you're searching for is the beginning or the end or not there at all, three steps would be enough to determine that. So it would happen somewhat quicker than linear search. And that's the beauty of binary search. Let's think about that a little bit more closely, because again, these are small examples to make it possible for us to hand trace stuff. It's a really good exercise to do that to prove that you understand how the code is working. And I will say, if you're a student in my class, this will definitely be on the next test. So these kinds of hand tracing exercises, really good proof that you understand what's happening in these algorithms. Or something like this. Maybe not this exact one, obviously, but maybe one of the other algorithms we would hand, we would hand trace. So a very small, very small example. Um, and in just a second, we'll talk about bigger examples. So trade-offs of binary search. This is gonna be much faster, right? Generally speaking, 
prefer, particularly for larger arrays, this is going to be much faster than linear search. And here's the math behind that. In the worst case, and the worst case is what you're looking for isn't in the array at all. In the worst case, for an array of n elements, it's going to take you a maximum of log base 2 of n plus 1 iterations to find the result of a search. Now, you're going to see a lot of logarithm base 2. Hopefully you've seen that in a pre-calculus class or something. So you see a lot of logarithm base 2 because that's the inverse of 2 to an exponent. And in computer science, there's a lot of 2 to the exponents because we've built the computer out of binary switches that have two possibilities. So you see a lot of powers of 2 running around in computer science, and therefore you also see a lot of logarithms base 2, which is just the inverse of that. All right? So be ready to see that. Little fine detail here. Um, technically, that calculation, that logarithm calculation, is truncated or rounded down. If it happens to come out to be a decimal, it actually gets rounded down, and then you add the plus 1. I left that out of the slide just for clarity. The disadvantage is that it does require the array elements to be sorted, right? This just will not work dependably if your array is not sorted. So then you might have the question of, like, what do I do if my array is not sorted? Well, the answer is, well, sort it. Put it in order, dummy, right? And that's what we'll be talking about next time when we talk about sorting algorithms that put an array in order so that you can use binary search with it. But that'll be next time. So let's dig a little bit more into that math. Right, let's, let's throw some examples on the screen just so we make sure we understand what we're really saying there. So, some timing examples. Remember that log base 2 of n, if that's x, that means the inverse of 2 to a power. Right, that means that 2 to the power x is equal to n. So, let's say I have an array size 8. Now, remember, we just hand traced an example of size 7, so this is almost the same thing. Logarithm base 2 of 8 would be 3 because 2 to the third power is how you would get 8. Therefore, the maximum number of iterations for the binary search would be 4. You'd only have to go through the loop at most 4 times. Notice that that would be a 50% savings over the linear search. Right? Linear search might have to look at all 8 things in 8 iterations, but with binary search you'd never have to go more than 4 iterations, so you'd save half the iterations or half the time. Now, if you had an array size 16, for argument's sake, right, log base 2 of 16 is 4, because 2 to the 4th power is how you get 16. Therefore, the maximum number of iterations for binary search would be 5. And in this case, you'd be saving 69% of the iterations over linear search. Right? Linear search might need to look at all 16. We only need to run 4 iterations here. So uh, 5 out of 16, right? You're saving 11 out of 16, and that's 69% of the iterations that linear search would need. Array size 64, okay. Log base 2 of 64 is actually 6. So you'd need 7 iterations at most, and at this point you're saving 89% of the time over linear search. If you have an array of size 1,000, something like 1,000, well, you know, 2 to the 10th power is 1,024. So log base 2 of 1,024 is 10, and at most you would need 11 iterations, and at this point you're saving 99% of the work. Right? Linear search might have to look at all 1,000 things, but binary search only has to go 10 steps or 11 steps. Right? 10 instead of 1,000, you've just saved 99% of your work. And it just keeps getting better. If you have an array of size a million, Right? Log base 2 of a million is pretty close to 20, so you would only need 21 iterations with binary search, whereas linear search might need to look at every single one of the million elements. So in this case, binary search is saving you 99.998% of the processor time. Great. So, in other words, doubling the size of the array only takes one extra step through the loop for binary search. That's incredibly powerful. And the advantage over linear search just keeps getting better and better and better with increasing size. Binary search is cosmically better than linear search. And if I'm working at Amazon or something like that, and I have 10 billion items in an array, for argument's sake, it'll almost take no time at all to search it with binary search, right? Uh, the logarithm base 2 of a billion is 30, right? Let's say I have a billion items. 30, so it only takes 31 steps. Whereas with linear search, it might take a billion steps. 
That's a huge savings. That's important. Okay, so hopefully we understand the enormous advantage of binary search over linear search. That, I mean, clearly if you have a sorted array, that's the silver bullet. That is a killer algorithm. And um, it's, it's kind of amazing if you think about it. Um, I will say, of course, that you need it sorted, right? The array needs to be sorted. If you don't have your array sorted, we'll be talking about that next time of options of putting the array in sorted order so that you can use binary search with it. And I will say that, you know, maybe in a later class, there might be some more options for searching that actually might even be faster than binary search. There's a technique called hashing. But hashing takes a little bit of math. And again, you have to organize your data in a particular way, and it actually takes more memory. So we'll leave that to another class, but maybe in a data structures class, uh, they might get into the hashing concept, which again, if you wanna make your search faster, you can organize your array, your list in a particular way, and hashing actually possibly takes more memory usually. But that'll be a totally different course. Now, if you're in your my class, the next time that we're in person, we'll be doing a lab on working with the binary search and we get a lab with a pre-made binary search function. We'll just kind of inspect it. Uh, it searches an array that's in descending order, right? From starts, the array starts with the largest thing and ends with the smallest thing. And our job will be to modify the algorithm to make it search uh, an array that's in ascending order, which is what we normally expect actually from smallest to largest. So we'll think about how much code needs to change to do that. As we said at the beginning of this video, binary search could work with either ascending sorted stuff or descending sorted stuff. And so in this lab, we got kind of get to practice both. So I think that'll be really interesting. Binary search, that is a killer algorithm and it really makes a lot of stuff in computer science go faster than it would otherwise. You really wanna have your data sorted in order because it lets you use binary search. So we'll certainly be thinking about that and probably using it more in future days. So when we come back next time, right, sorting is what we better do to get our arrays in the right order for binary search on it. And again, we'll be looking at two algorithms in the next two videos. There's, bind, there's bubble sort, there's selection sort that we'll look at. And once again, we'll wanna do some math, understand both of them, do some math and make a decision about which one is better in most cases. So I'll see you then for that.